So this is the Nokia 5.4. And in this video, I'm gonna do a quick unboxing of the device, talk about its most important features and compare it in size against some of its siblings. So let's have a look inside the box. First thing you get is the device itself. And I here have the purple version. You also get a 10 watts brake charger. You get a USB-C charging cable. In the Middle Eastern version, you also get these very cheap looking headphones. And you also get a rubber case. So this might be version specific. The Middle Eastern version gets this. The version you might get might not have this in the box, but I think the Indian version will also get the same thing. So let's quickly unwrap the device. And here you have it. I got the purple version, which looks really nice. So while we wait for the phone to turn on, let's talk about the dimensions of this phone. So this is how it compares in size against the Nokia 5.3. And this is how it compares against the Nokia 7.2. And this is how it compares against the Nokia 3.4. So let's quickly talk about the most important specs of this phone. So the front of the phone has a 6.39 inch HD plus display, which is the same resolution as its predecessor, but slightly smaller. And as a result, the phone is a bit smaller than its predecessor when it comes to dimensions and feels this way. On the front, you have a hole punch display this time around, as opposed to a traditional notch on its predecessor. And this hole punch houses a camera that's 16 megapixels in resolution, which is about double the amount of megapixels as its predecessor. The phone is of course running on Android 10 out of the box as a part of the Android One program. This means that it's a pretty stock Android experience and you can expect two years of Android updates and three years of security updates. The only issue here is that this phone ships with Android 10 out of the box when Android 11 is already out in the wild, but you can expect to receive Android 11 updates shortly. When it comes to internals, this phone ships with the Snapdragon 662 processor with the Adreno 610 GPU. So in theory, this is a slight step up when it comes to the Snapdragon 665 on its predecessor, as this G CPU is a bit more power efficient, scores slightly better in benchmarks and supports smarter AI technology. On the other hand, it also supports slightly slower 3G and 4G speeds as a compromise. But I think for most people, they won't really care and they won't really notice. So the back of this phone houses a quad camera setup. So the main camera is a 48 megapixel camera, which is a big upgrade compared to its predecessor. Then the rest of the setup is pretty much identical. So you have a five megapixel ultra wide camera, a two megapixel macro lens, and a two megapixel depth sensor. There is also the fingerprint scanner on the back. The biggest difference here is that this phone has a glossy black finish, which captures fingerprints like no other, but I think it looks really, really nice. And it has this textured look, even though it's quite smooth when it comes to how it feels in the hand. When it comes to the battery, this phone has a 4000 milliamp battery, which is exactly the same as its predecessor. But when it comes to the RAM of this phone, there's no longer a three gigabyte of RAM variant, which I'm glad for. So the minimum you get is four gigabytes of RAM, or you can upgrade to a six gigabyte of RAM version. The version I'm using here has four gigs of built-in RAM and 128 gigs of built-in storage, which is really nice. And the phone also supports an SD slot. As for the rest of the hardware, where there's nothing extraordinary, but you do get the Google Assistant button, hate it or like it. I personally am not a big fan, but I guess it's here to stay. There is also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the phone charges using a USB-C connection. 
connector. The phone also has a single bottom firing speaker. The phone comes in two colors, so you have this very cool looking dust color, which is purple, and you also have polar night color, which is blue, and that can be found on the box here. The phone feels quite solid in the hand. I wouldn't say it's an upgrade over its predecessor, but overall I'm very happy with the build quality and I'm very happy with the way this phone looks. So one of the big selling points of this device is that it comes with advanced video options. So it inherits some of the Nokia 8.3's cinema mode features. What this means is that this phone is capable of capturing video in a 21 by 9 aspect ratio, which is similar to a widescreen cinema aspect ratio. And the phone also supports the H-Log video format, which is raw video that can be edited later. And it also supports advanced video options, so you can change things such as the exposure, the shutter speed, the ISO, the autofocus and the white balance. So that's quite cool. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the Nokia 5.4. I'm gonna be doing my review soon after I put my main SIM card on this device and use it for a week's time. And you can also expect comparisons with the Nokia 5.3 and the Nokia 3.4 in case you're confused and wondering which Nokia device is the best for you. So that's it from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.